Hi, today I'm going to be going over how to start a student in watercolors. When you start a student for the first time, um, they're going to need a few supplies. And first of all, they need a large number 12 brush and a small number 2 brush. Watercolor synthetic brushes. Round. They also will be receiving a new uh, watercolor uh, pan set and a palette. Uh, I like to set it up in a triangle. The water cup would go in the middle with the um, paints further from you and the palette closest to you. The reason for this is that you never want to take the paint directly from the pan. You always want to put it in the palette first. So that's why it would be in this order. To start with watercolors, um, make sure the student also grabs a paper towel, a pencil, and an eraser. You as the teacher are going to need a ruler to get them started for the first um, training. Now when you start them with watercolors for the first time, they're going to have their own pad. Today I just have a simple sheet of paper. However, when they start, they're going to get a whole pad of uh, watercolor block, which is a lot nicer than this. So to start, you're going to sit down. You would be the teacher, like I, I'm pretending to be the teacher today, and you are the student. Uh, when you start, you're going to sit down and actually draw for them a grid. And this is where they're going to practice their washes. Washes, you'll explain to them, are ways of applying the paint to the paper. There are going to be four different washes that we go over today. The first wash is going to be called a flat wash. Now, an important aspect to go over with the new student is when you're mixing colors to create your washes, you need to explain to them that, first of all, you need the water to wet the paint before you even start. And what you want to do is load up your brush. You see I'm kind of loading it up, and you put it in the palette. The more water you add to the paint, the lighter the color. The more paint you add, the darker the color. Now it's really important to also explain that you need to mix up enough paint to cover the area. More is better. Because if you were to run out of paint mid-wash, then you would never be able to get the exact color again because you don't know how much water to how much paint you added. So once you get a good amount, like I said, more is better. You load up your brush, like I said, and look how I can, it holds that water really well. I can load it up without the water dripping, but as soon as I start to shake it, all that water comes out. So get a nice amount of water in your brush. You start at the top of the paper. Notice also how I'm holding the brush this way and pulling, and not this way. The reason is, I want to get this really nice drip that collects where the dry paper meets the paint. That's called a drip, where it collects like this. And notice I get more of a drip when I hold the pencil, or sorry, <laughs> the brush, this way. So I'm going to work my way down, and as the drip starts to get less and less, I reload my brush. I go into it again. Now, notice how this is called a flat wash because it's all the same. I can leave this and not work on it because this drip will keep that line wet. If I didn't have a drip and I took a break and came back, you'd see that line even once you were done with this wash. Also, keep in mind that you cannot go back up. Say I missed a spot here. You can't go back up and fix it because it's going to leave a watermark. If you make mistakes in watercolors, you really just have to let it go and go back later to fix. I'm going to load up my brush, keep going. Now once I get to the bottom, you see the drip there. You don't want that. This is where your paper towel comes in handy. You just dry off your brush and you soak up that drip. Notice how I didn't soak it up lower. I wanted to stay within the box. 
So I soaked it up just where the drip was and I dried off my brush. Now, the student would then come in and do the entire sheet full of flat washes. Sometimes they need to do more if they don't really understand the concept and are needing more help but they have to do at least one full page of flat washes. But keep in mind that I'm not gonna work right next to this flat wash because if a uh, wash is wet and you work next to it, it can bleed in. So you need to be very careful about working further away. So at this point, I would get up and let the student come and work on their sheet of paper and they should do, like I said, the flat washes. So if you could pause the video and you as the student sit down and do a page of flat washes. Alright, the next wash that we are going to discuss is called a graduated wash. The graduated wash is where you go from dark to light. How that is graduated. A lot of people want to say graduation wash, but it's actually a graduated wash. And what you want to do is make sure you mix up a lot enough paint. Now, keep in mind, I usually actually keep the paper towel in my left hand since I'm right-handed, just in case of quick spills or drips, things like that. But you never want to actually take the paper towel to the paper unless you're creating a texture, which we'll go over later. Um, so in here, I'm going to go ahead and start at the top. This is great wash for um, skies, things like that, shadows, because instead of going in with more paint, I'm gonna go in with water and lighten it slowly as you work your way down the page. So every few lines of paint, I'm going to actually wash off my brush and lighten it. It's important to have clean water. If your water has a lot of color in it, then it's going, it's not going to go clear. So it's very important to have clean water at this point. And when you reach the bottom, just soak it up. There you go. That is a graduated wash. So the next wash that I'm going to go over is called the transitional wash. And what that is, is you're going from one color into the next. Um, and this is nice for, say, sunsets, um, any plate time that you're going to change a color in an image or in a painting. So you need to make sure that you have your paint already mixed up. So I'm going to mix up three colors. Three colors is kind of a good amount for this size and teaching the student. What I'm going to start with is the green. I'm going to go just on top. And it's important here, one of the, the most important things is to have a really big drip because I want the colors to bleed together so they transition well, hence transitional wash. So I'm gonna wash off my brush, go into the next color. And do you see how they bleed together? Keep going, make sure again I have a nice drip. And then go into the last color. And again, I'm going into that drip. And there we go. So at this point, if you could go ahead and pause the video and do an entire page of transitional washing. So the final wash that we're going to discuss today is a wet into wet. It's also the easiest wash. I save it for the end for the kids because they enjoy it the best. Um, and what that is, go wet into wet. 
here is you want to have again your paints all mixed up. I typically do three different colors. You're going to take the water and go all over the area that you want paint to go into. Notice how I'm not covering everything. I'm leaving a little bit dry. But you have to work quickly. That is the trick with this wash. And what you do is you just dab in the paint and it will go wherever you put the water. And it creates almost a tie-dye effect. Um, and it's a fun, easy wash. So at this point, if you could pause the video and go ahead and do at least half a page of the wet into wet.